What's going on today guys? Hope everybody's having a great day. So over this last weekend that you saw me and John and Evan at the drag strip with Johnny's truck, Andrew was actually here working on putting his uh, new charger we just got from Barter uh, in the previous video on and that's what he was doing. So he actually videoed some of his cell phone. So I'm going to let you guys see exactly what he videoed. So I'm going to show you that now. Hey, what's going on guys? Um... Greg and Johnny sanded her down at ATCO, so I'm here working on my truck, trying to get the turbo on. First thing I'm gonna do is, uh, uh, James told us that, I guess, AN fittings, they have different inside diameters. These ones are a little bit bigger, so to eliminate any more oiling issues, we're just gonna change them out. They're not that much bigger, you know, but we're just gonna do that for peace of mind. Um, so that's the first thing I'm gonna be doing here. I was thinking about just trying to cut brand new, but I feel like, I'll just take these old ones off and see if I can just pop the new ones on with no cutting. Therefore, there's already oil in this line, so I don't want to get any shavings in there. So, just going to see if I can't pop these off, pop the new ones on. You can see how flared that is at the end. So, I think I am going to have to just cut a little bit off. I'm just going to cut... As little as I can, this hose is already pre-made with a little bit of slack, but don't want to go too short and have the oil line too tight. I'm going to go outside and cut this, and uh, I'll be right back. All right, guys, so I got both ends cut. You can see how much flatter and easier those uh, fittings will go on there to start. That's it, just like that, one side done. You can't you can't really tell a difference holding them up to each other, um, but the inside diameter on these ones are a little bigger. These were vibrant fittings. I can't rightfully remember the ones that he told me that these are a big, big flow or something, I don't know, some weird name. Kind of an off brand, I guess he said. Doesn't use them much, he just figured he'd try them out. But, so. Just gonna send it. Got that second baby on there. Went on good. You really wanna make sure that your ends, I don't know, Greg, I guess Greg probably covered that, but you really wanna make sure your ends are not flared at all. It makes them easier to go on there and you know, just a cleaner overall look. It's gonna hold better and you don't gotta worry about nothing. So everything's going sexy. Picked up the new snail last night from James. Uh, a little bigger on the exhaust side so we'll see how she works I also got to get a drive pressure gauge in there for a little peace of mind on everybody's sake that's it baby new lines are done Moving on. All right guys, so next thing I gotta do is, uh, we discovered last night that the fitting coming out of uh, the oil filter housing is you know, the same size as the fitting going into the turbo, but for some reason the fitting in the turbo, not gonna be able to see, but kinda necks down a little bit. So I'm just gonna drill it out flush with this one just again for peace of mind a little bit more oil flow you know it's not going to hurt anything so just going to find the right drill bit and uh drill that out just got the fitting from the turbo drilled out the same size as the oil filter housing one so we're good to go there uh bigger diameter on these drilled out bigger diameter on the an feed line that i'll be running uh so everything is good to go there now uh, i'm going to take you guys outside Put these in their respective places and uh, bolt that bitch up. Here it is, the new the new snail. It's a billet six blade, 471, 96 with a 10 housing. So a little bit bigger on the exhaust side, a little bit smaller on the inducer side, but should make should make some good power. Um, so we're hoping this one uh, holds up a little bit longer. This one's built by James Barger. We can't thank him enough for. Uh, 
customer service that he helped us out with he went above and beyond so if anybody is looking for a charger from custom you know to to a box turbo he can, he can help you out with anything so definitely go give him a look uh, i'm going to go ahead and get this thing disassembled and uh, bolt up the exhaust housing first as usual take you guys along for the ride got the exhaust housing here gonna throw that on quick put the new gasket on always use a new gasket throw that on and uh, I got the uh, I got the fitting in the oil filter housing uh, so that's all tight so as always boys and girls when dealing with a new setup something's always gonna go wrong the sun's in the way but this exhaust stud right here is actually contacting uh, where the center section v-band is supposed to go so I got to pull this housing back off and cut that stud down a little bit. So a little update, I did have to take this stud out, took the exhaust housing out, took the stud out, I had to chop it down. It was contacting this where the V-band sits. So I also just test fitted the center section in the middle here with the V-band. It's enough clearance to fit that and get that snug. I feel comfortable with it. So that's how it's gonna look. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put you guys back on the stand and resume filming. Uh, I know you guys can't really see what I'm doing down in here, but you know, obviously the exhaust housing just mounts up by these four bolts and then a couple V-bands out. You gotta hook up the oil oil feed and the oil drain. Um, so that's what I'll be doing. Uh, I'm gonna put you back on the stand now. Ryan Sorry guys, you fell off my stand. Just to let you know, I'm filming with my iPhone right now since Greg's got his camera down at the track. So what I got you guys is, this is our engine uh, engine puller. I got a vice grip right here and I'm kind of just resting you guys on the side. So uh, a strong gust of wind just came by and blew you off. I'm actually gonna put another vice grip behind it, almost sandwich it to make sure I don't break my freaking phone. <laughs> the things we do for you channel. Uh, V-band on the downpipe is tight. I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, center section in here, hook up the drain, um, put the fitting, and I might actually prime it before I put the fitting in. Um, not sure yet, but I'm going to get the fitting in the top, prime it up, uh, hook, the, uh, hook the feed up, hook the feed and drain up, and then uh, continue on moving forward. Like we said, we always, we always uh, prime our turbos before, before we, uh, we turn the truck on. All right, so back at Casa de Greg with Johnny Send It. Andrew's been here working on putting his charger on. I think he's been videoing some, so I don't know where I'm actually going to splice this in at this point. But we actually just started his truck up, and the oil pressure gauge was fine and then went down. For those of you guys who know, the oil pressure in these third gen trucks doesn't really read. Like when it says 40, it's not actually reading 40, it's kind of a dummy gauge. So luckily, I actually had a uh, ispro oil pressure gauge off of a other build and we're gonna hook that up into the top port here uh, and just kind of dummy wire it up just to make sure see what we got going on because the saga continues on if we have an issue or not Andrew's not feeling really well right now All right, guys, we do not have great news for you thus far. Uh, we put my oil pressure gauge on here, hooked it up temporarily, did not see anything, went to, so far as to get a open hose into a bucket, and do not have any oil when we start the motor. So, unfortunately, that's where we are at with Andrew's truck. Um, it's very possible that that was the issue with the last charger possibly took out the charger before it wiped out the entire motor possibly the oil pump was getting weak over time on that trip home where the turbo uh, died and it took out the turbo first we are not honestly sure right now so we will keep you guys updated as we unravel the mystery 
start. Any starting, final words? Starting a GoFundMe page. <laughs> yeah. go, fund, go fund my motor. Should we start? Should we start a GoFundMe motor page for Andrew's Andrew's build? You guys are honestly seeing this firsthand as it happens. Saturday afternoon. I think we're actually planning on going back to Johnny Sendit's house, pulling his motor. Got here, and this is kind of. These videos might be all over the place, but this is real. Oh my God, dude, I'm coming back. Everybody's yeah. Me and Johnny are on our way back to Johnny's house and my truck, after everything that's happened today, just started dinging. I'm looking down at all my gauges. Everybody thinks that my truck's about to blow up because that's about the way things are going today. Freaking holy crap, low washer fluid. Oh my. Coming back from April. So the truck, at some point, somewhere, on that last SXE charger failure, uh, lost oil pressure. Where we're at and what we're gonna proceed doing is pulling the front of the motor apart to get to the oil pump. Um, it's possible there is a pickup issue. There's a possible uh, probability that it's an oil pump issue. That's kind of where we're leaning. Um, we don't really know at this point when it completely lost oil pressure. If it had some at some point, uh, the motor still sounds fine. Um, we're gonna pull some of the top end apart to see if there's any scoring of any kind and then probably, possibly pull the oil pan as well at some point just to make sure uh, and then see what we got going on really. We don't know at this point. We're gonna dive into that uh, very, very soon here. But what that means is uh, that last SXE failure that we had no reason of why it really failed, now we know. Now we know that something in the oiling system was, ha probably had some pressure, but not enough pressure. Definitely not all the way up to oil filter housing, which makes me feel honestly a heck of a lot better now that we have an explanation of why that charger failed. So uh, with that being said, I do still really like the SXE. I know a lot of you guys were commenting and messaging me about SXEs and stuff like that. I do still think they're great. I do still think they're new and that they are a little sensitive, but at least I can say without a doubt, you know, you're not going to blow one up in a couple hundred miles like we did that we thought you know was really more of a turbo failure than a uh, oil supply issue. Now getting to what people were commenting, you know you definitely have an oil supply issue, this and that. Obviously you would never guess that, oh, oil supply issue, you must have an oil pump going bad in your motor. So um, you know it is what it is guys. We're gonna figure out what it is. We're gonna fix it. You guys obviously see everything if it gets into more in-depth motor stuff. You guys will be seeing all that. Um, you guys are, I'm, I'm doing my best to try and uh, tackle everybody's projects that are around me uh, and showing you guys exactly what's going on with everybody's trucks. Kind of try to get, try and get some technical stuff, some lifestyle stuff, have some fun in the meantime. But hopefully you guys are enjoying the wide variety of content that's coming out from pretty much just normal stuff that we're doing, guys. This is, you know, we're not planning on blowing up oil pumps and Johnny's not planning on blowing uh, Dow pins up and stuff like that, but um, you know, we're just taking it as it comes and I'm trying to get it all on camera guys the best I can. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button before you leave. Please subscribe and I will see you guys very soon.